Hi, good evening. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Kevin. How was your day? I'm fine. Okay, excellent. How about the others? Mauricio and Juan, how are you? I am fine, teacher. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, can you tell me what did we study yesterday? Was and were. Okay, excellent. Yes, we were studying the past, the simple past tense of the verb to be. Was and were. Uh, and when am I going to use was? I don't understand. Okay. Uh, with which subject pronouns do I use was? I. Okay, I. She and he. She. It. Okay, perfect. And where? You. We. They. they. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Yes, remember that yesterday we said that we are going to use the verb to be was with I, he, she, and it. And I'm going to use were with you, we, and they. Okay? Uh, what else did we study yesterday? Can you remember me? Uh huh. So if I ask you, what are the uses of the verb to be? What is your answer going to be? Let's see how much you remember. ¿Cuáles son los usos del verbo to be? Ayer lo vimos. No, ya se les olvidó. Name. Okay, names, excellent. What else? A. Okay. Profession. Professionality. Okay. okay, perfect. What else? Relations. Okay. Places. Okay. Feelings. Wooden feelings. Okay, perfect. So I can see that you've been studying. I really like that. Okay? Me parece. Okay. And if you remember, the last thing that we did yesterday um, was to study affirmative statements. Okay? Hasta ahí llegamos el día de ayer con las oraciones afirmativas. So you can see that I have here affirmative sentences using was and using were. Um, let me see. Janet. Can you read the first sentences, please? I was happy. He was hungry. Hungry? Hungry. He was a nurse. It was a big. Thank you. Juan, can you read the next sentences, please? We, we were early. Early, uh, you were at school, they were quiet. 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 Okay, thank you. So you can see here what we were saying at the beginning. If I have to stop the pronouns I, he, she, and it, I'm going to use was. But when I have we, you, and they, I'm going to use were. Okay, so that was something that we studied yesterday. So today we are going to be studying negative statements and yes, no questions and information questions. Okay, so with negative statements, the only thing that we are going to do here 
is to add the negative form for the not next to the verb to be in simple past. So for example, if I have was, I can say was not. Or if I'm talking about were, were not. Or the form that we use most of the time that is the contracted one, wasn't and weren't, okay? So let me see, Mauricio, can you read these examples, please? I wasn't sad. He wasn't thirsty. Thirsty. She wasn't a teacher. He wasn't small. Thank you. Um, Arely, can you read the next example, please? She, she wasn't no, a teacher. We. Here. Ah, perdón. Uh, we weren't late. Uh, you you weren't at home, they weren't on noise. Noisy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Noisy. thank you. So you can see here that we have the negative examples. Uh, so the only thing that we're doing is to add the verb to be in its negative form. And something that you need to remember, sorry, is that the way that we are going to be making affirmative and negative sentences is the following. We are going to have subject plus the verb to be plus a complement, okay? Esa es la forma en la que vamos a estar haciendo oraciones, tanto afirmativas como negativas. Primero vamos a usar lo que es sujeto, luego el verbo to be, ya sea was or were, y el complemento, okay? And if you can see the complement, it's something that we studied yesterday. El complemento es lo que estuvimos viendo el día de ayer. So, for example, happy. ¿En qué categoría de los usos caería? Feelings. Okay. Hungry. Okay. Nurse. Profession. Okay. Big. Description. Okay, perfect. Early. Hello. With early. Description. A description. Are you sure that that is a description? Or are we talking about time? Hello? Okay, probably that was something that I didn't mention yesterday, but another use of the verb to be is with time, okay? También el tiempo, con el tiempo, usamos lo que es el verbo to be. Most of the time with hours. La mayoría del tiempo con las horas. Okay. So the next one, at school. What is Place. It? Okay, and quiet. Feeling. A feeling. Description. Description. O un estado de ánimo. Mood. Okay, it is a mood. Thank you. So you can see that that's the way how we are going to be making affirmative and negative statements. In the case that we have negative sentences, the only thing that we need to do is to add the verb to be in its negative form. Okay? Hasta ahí. ¿Está todo claro o tienen preguntas? Can you tell me? Vaya, el de yo he dicho. Este, por lo menos aquí los los verbos no es como los otros este 
que el verbo no cambia, o en este caso, pues sí tiene que ir en pasado también. Ah, vaya, como acá estamos usando lo que es el verbo to be, tenemos lo que es el be in past tense. El, la forma del to be en pasado simple es was o were, ¿ok? Dijimos que was, lo voy a utilizar cuando estoy hablando, permítanme, de la primera persona, es decir, I, she, he, and it. Y were, lo voy a utilizar, ¿ok? Cuando estoy hablando de you, we, and they, ¿ok? Lo que les mostraba el día de ayer, el verbo to be, en español es ser o estar, ¿ok? Entonces vienen y ustedes me dicen, teacher, yo estoy feliz porque ya terminé la plataforma. So you can tell me, I am happy, I am a student, for example, y si se dan cuenta, aquí el verbo principal es el to be, soy, o estoy, yo estoy feliz. Yo soy un estudiante. My mother is a teacher, for example. My brothers are teachers too. Mis hermanos también son profesores. Ok, pero el verbo que yo tengo acá es el to be. Ahora, si yo quiero hacer estas mismas oraciones, pero en pasado simple, vengo y digo, I was happy. O sea, es algo que ya pasó. Yo estaba feliz. Pero, ¿qué pasó? Que ya no lo estoy. Ah, me acordé que tengo que estudiar. Y ya eso ya no me gustó. ¿Ok? I am a student. Yo soy estudiante. Dentro de cinco años probablemente yo ya no diga lo mismo. O venga y diga, I was a student. Yo era una estudiante, ahora ya no lo soy. Now I'm a teacher. I have, my mother is a teacher. Probablemente ya ella, digamos, dejó de trabajar, se retiró, etc. I can say, my mother was a teacher, okay? And on the next one, I can say my brothers were teachers, okay? O sea, si usted se da cuenta, acá tengo lo que es un adjetivo, un sustantivo, y acá también tengo lo que son sustantivos. El verbo principal es el verbo to be, ya sea en su forma presente o pasada. Estamos estudiando lo que es el pasado del verbo to be. Si usted me quisiera decir, yo estoy o yo cociné. Para eso, utilizo lo que es otro verbo que me indica acción o movimiento. I cooked. Um, what? I, could, I cooked eggs, for example. Ok. La diferencia del verbo to be con los otros verbos que nos estuvimos aprendiendo es que el verbo to be me indica lo que es, va, lo que vimos ayer, ser o estar. Ok. O los 10 usos que vimos. En cambio, los otros verbos me, me denotan a mí lo que es acción o movimiento. Another one. Um, we that did English, ¿ok? Nosotros estudiamos inglés, algo que ya pasó. They, sorry, they played soccer. They lost the match. Ellos perdieron el partido. Um, we didn't, for example, We didn't drink coffee. Ok. 
O sea, acá estos verbos a mí me están indicando lo que es una acción o movimiento. ¿Ok? Y aquí me están indicando lo que es un estado, en el caso de feliz, o una profesión, en el caso de estudiante y profesor o profesora. ¿Ok? No sé si me doy a entender. Yes, teacher. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, and what about the others? Con los demás, ¿está claro o tienen preguntas? That's okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let me see something else here. Ok. Vaya, les pregunto por qué vamos a estar trabajando en un ejercicio ya dentro de unos minutos. Ok. Well, if there are no questions, we are going to watch a video about the questions with the past of the verb to be. Ok. So vamos a ver entonces el siguiente video que es el pasado simple del verbo to be. Uh, here you're going to be able to see the different questions, for example, yes, no questions or information questions. So let's, so let's begin. In this class, you'll learn how to ask and answer questions with the past of be. Additionally, you'll also learn how to express years. Let's get started by analyzing the questions that you see on this chart. Questions with the past of B. Were you born in the U.S.? Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Was your brother born in 1984? Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Were your parents born in Incheon? Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Where were you born? I was born in Korea. When was he born? He was born in 1985. What city were they born in? They were born in Seoul. Years. 1906. 1917. 1999. 2001. To form questions with the past of B, we can follow this formula. WH word plus was or where plus subject plus complement. Let me point out that whenever we make yes or no questions, there won't be a WH word. Let's analyze a couple of examples. Were you born in the US? In this case, this is a yes or no question, so we don't add a WH word. The first thing we do is add the verb to be in the past, where. Next, we need to include the subject, you. Finally, we need to add the complement and a question mark at the end, born in the US. To answer this type of question, we can answer positively by saying, yes, I was, or negatively by saying, no, I wasn't. Let's analyze one last example. Where were you born? In this case, this is a WH question, so we need to add a WH word. The first thing we need to do is to add a WH word. Next, we need to include the verb to be in the past, where. After that, we need to add the subject, you. Finally, we need to add a complement and a question mark born. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to practice making questions about place of origin and birthdays, similar to the examples on the chart. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forum. Okay, so that's the information that we have 
or yes, no question. And, sorry. Where is it? Here it is. Okay. And the way that we are going to be making yes, no questions in the simple past with the verb to be is the following. So you can see that here I have affirmative sentences. They were happy. She was rich. So the only thing that I'm going to do is to change the position of the verb to be and the subject. And since this is a question, I need to add the question mark at the end, okay? So the affirmative sentence, they were happy, becomes, were they happy? She was rich, becomes, was she rich? And I can answer those questions saying, yes, they were, or no, they weren't. Yes, she was, or no, she wasn't. Okay, la forma en la que yo voy a hacer preguntas cerradas es la siguiente. Voy a intercambiar lo que es el verbo to be con el sujeto. Ok, si se dan cuenta acá, tengo sujeto, el verbo, más el complemento. Para las preguntas, inicio con el verbo to be, que en este caso es where, luego el sujeto, que estoy hablando de ellos, más el complemento. Happy, feliz, o felices. En el caso de la segunda, tengo ella era rica. Entonces comienzo yo con lo que es el verbo to be, was, then the subject, she, and the complement, rich, and the question mark. Okay? Is that clear for you? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's see if that's true. Vamos a ver qué tan cierto es. For example, I'm going to move to the affirmative statements again. Um, Arely, how would the first sentence be in question? Okay, I think that she's having problems. So, Isael. Okay, Kevin. Was I happy? Excellent. The next one, Raquel. Was he hungry? Hungry. Okay. Hungry. <laughs> okay, excellent. Mauricio, the next one. Was she a nurse? Excellent. Janet. Was it be? Perfect. Juan. Mm, were you at school? Were you at school? Okay. Sylvia. Were they quiet? Okay, and the last one, um, Carla. Were we early? Okay, excellent. Vaya, hasta ahí, ¿está todo claro o hay preguntas? Todo claro. Okay, perfect. This is easy, okay? With yes, no question, the only thing that we are doing, remember, is changing the position of the verb to be and the subject and the rest will remain the same so let's see with information questions with information questions as you can see we're going to have the wh word then the verb to be was or were the subject plus the complement okay Para las preguntas abiertas, vamos a iniciar con la WH word, luego el verbo, sea was, were, the subject, and complement, ¿ok? 
Acá está un poco más fácil, ¿verdad? Porque aquí les dice que van a usar was con I, he, she, and it, and were with we, you, and they. ¿Ok? Um, Jacqueline, can you read the examples, please? Ok, teacher. Um, all the text. The, the examples here. Um, why, why, was why was she happy? Mm, no, we have it here. Los ejemplos que están acá. Okay. Um, they. Uh, okay, Jacqueline, estamos acá al, en lo último de la presentación. Acá, why? Ah. Why, why was he why angry? Okay. Other, other example. Yes, can you oh. read the next example? Um, why was, why was she, she happy, for example? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Kevin, can you continue, please? Where were you yesterday? Okay. Continue. Where, where? Continue. Okay. Yes, please. When was she nervous? Okay. Who were those four people? People. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So you can see that that's the way how we are going to be making information questions, okay? So, for example, if I ask you, why was he angry? Porque estaba él enojado. What is the answer going to be? Uh -huh. He was tired. Sorry, can you say that one more time? He was tired. Okay. Why was he angry? Because he was tired. Hired. Hired or fired? Ta uh, cansado. Sorry, I heard tired. Okay, so because he was tired. Thank you. Another possible answer. Because he was. ¿Por qué se enojan los hombres? Digan, cuenten. Uh -huh. Can you tell me? It's correct to say because he was a problem. Because he was... Mm, no, he had a problem. Because, because he, he, he had a okay. problem. Porque él tenía un problema. Okay. I can also say because he was hungry, porque tenía hambre. Okay. I don't know if that's a reason why men get angry. No sé si por eso se enojarán los hombres, ¿verdad? But, because he was late to work. Okay. So you can see that there we have some possible answers to that question. Okay. So let's continue. If I go to the next one, where is it? Here, okay. 
Uh, the next question says, where were you yesterday? Mauricio. ¿Cuál es el hijo? The, the next question, where were you yesterday? Where were you yesterday? Yes, can you tell me your answer? Uh, I, I were a class. Okay. No. Give me a few seconds. Let me write the question. Where were you? Yesterday, donde estuvo ayer? I was a class. In class. The, in class. In class, okay. Uh, Janet, where were you yesterday? I was at work. Okay. Um, Isael, how about you? Where were you yesterday? I was in the restaurant. I was in, in the restaurant. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So is that clear for you? The way how we're going to be making information questions? Está claro cómo vamos a hacer estas preguntas y cómo vamos a responder? Yes. Okay. And any questions? Alguna pregunta o todo en, está claro? En esa pregunta, este, se pudiera también, si, si uh, hay varias personas con las que estoy, puedo decir we we were at work. Excellent. Yes. Um, remember that with this question, you, acá cuando yo pregunto you. Puede ser singular o plural. Es decir, tú o ustedes. Where were you yesterday? ¿Dónde estuvieron ayer? We were at work. We were at home. We were um, in class, for example. ¿Ok? Sí, no, no necesariamente va a ser solo con I. Depende, ¿verdad? Si me dirijo solamente a una persona, es decir, a usted o si me dirijo a todos ustedes, ¿ok? ¿Is that clear? Yes? Yes. Ok. So, let's see. There was an exercise on the video that we watched. And that's something that we are going to be doing right now. Okay, so the first question that was mentioned there was when were you born? Okay, Arely, can you tell me when were you born? You're going to tell me the year, basically. Okay, Kevin? I was born in San Salvador. Uh, I was born in? San Salvador. Okay, just look at the WH word, when. Am I asking ah. about time or place? Uh, I was born in uh, seventh uh, September. 
¿Cuándo, ¿Cuándo nací? Esta es la pregunta, ¿verdad? ¿eh? Yes. Seventh. Eh, September. September 7th. September 7th. Okay. That is one option, yes. But if I want to say the year, I was born in 19, for example, si yo quiero saber el año en el que nacieron, I was born in 19, y dicen lo demás, ¿verdad? For example, in 1988. So, Arely, when were you born? I was uh, okay. I was uh, born uh, on August twelve. Okay, y el año? Soy de mil novecientos noventa, pero no sé cómo decirlo. In 1990. Okay, so you were born in 1990. But necesito que me digan el año. Okay, Isael, how about you? When were you born? Okay, I was born in April 2. Okay. 19, 19, 1994. Okay. So you were born in 1994. How about you, Kevin? Kevin, can you tell us the year that you were born? 1987. In 1987, you said, right? Thank yeah. you. Janet, how about you? I was born in 1993. Thank you. Uh, how about you, Raquel? I was born in 1985. Okay. Thank you. Juan, how about you? I was born in 1990, 1999. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me see. Silvia. Hello, Silvia. I was born in 1974. Thank you. And how about you, Jacqueline? Sorry? Can you tell us when were you born? I was born in eighty-three. Can you say that one more time, please? Sorry, teacher. I have mal connection. Okay. Yeah, sorry because I could barely hear you. So I'm going to continue. Ernesto, how about you? When were you born? I was born in 1990. 1999. Okay, sorry. Can you say that one more time, please? 
1993. Okay, in 1999. Uh -huh. Okay, let me see. I think that I'm missing someone, Mauricio. I was born 1973. 19? 73. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, there's something that I need to tell you. And this is with years. When we're talking about years in English, the way that we are going to do it is the following. We're going to divide the numbers in groups of two, okay? Los números, en especial los años, en inglés los dividimos en dos grupos. O sea, los leemos de dos en dos. So, in the example here, I was born in 1990. 19. 19 94, 1987, 1993, 1985, 1999, 1974, 1999, 1973. Okay, esa es la forma en la que vamos a leer los años en inglés de dos en dos. However, from 2000 till 2010, we are going to read the full form, okay? Si hablamos del año 2000, hasta el 2010, ahí sí, se lee la forma completa, okay? So, for example, some of you can tell me, uh, my daughter was born in 2005, okay? No me van a decir 2005 or 2005 or 2005. No, aquí en este caso se tiene que leer la forma completa. Okay? He or she was born in 2005. Or in the case I have another year, um, my brother was born in 2009, for example. Okay? Del 2000 al 2010 se va a leer la forma completa. Del 2011 hasta el 2999, comenzamos otra vez a leerlos de dos en dos. Is that clear for you? Yes. Si ponemos el ejemplo del 2020, sería 2020. Yes. That is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let's move. I have the next question. Where were you born? Uh, Mauricio, where were you born? I was born on Santana. I was born in Santa Ana. Okay, Janet, how about you? I was born in San Salvador. Okay, in San... Tengo una Go ahead. pregunta. Entonces, es incorrectísimo este, um, decir así como I was born in... 1000, o sea, le, le, leer el número entero como el 1990. Tiene que ser así por separado siempre. Sí, generalmente la mayoría de personas se lo va a leer así de dos en dos. Y es la forma más práctica que ellos tienen. Porque decir, I was born in, nine, in 1990, toma más tiempo que decir 1990. Y algo que se tiene con el inglés es que hasta cierto punto nos facilita bastante la, la, la vida. Entonces okay. ahí yo voy a decir 1990. Lo mismo viene a suceder con cantidades de dinero. Por ejemplo, si yo tengo esta cantidad, how would you read it? Si yo tengo esta cantidad, ¿cómo la leerían ustedes? 1,500. Ok, yes, es una forma. Pero 
de igual manera que con los números, ellos no se la van a leer así completa, sino que la forma más fácil o simple que ellos tienen es decirle 1500. 1500. 1500. Ah, o sea, nosotros si lo traducimos literalmente sería así como 1500. Pero es muy común que le lean los números así. Cuando estamos hablando de cantidades de dinero. Ok. So, if I have the following. Um, where is it? Ok. ¿Cómo quedaría? 2300. Ok, 2300. Ok, perfecto. Sí, o sea, eso es algo que se tiene allá, ¿verdad? A veces la gente cuando, digamos, llama al banco para preguntar cuál es el saldo o el balance, la forma más común que se va a usar es esta, $1,500 dollars, or $2,300 dollars. ¿Ok? O algunos le van a decir $2,300 o $1,500. ¿Ok? Pero generalmente la mayoría anda usando esta forma, el $1,500. $2,300. Um, if I have this one, for example, $9,900. ¿Ok? O sea, son cosas que ellos no sé si no, no se andan ahí complicando, ¿verdad? O sea, tratan de hacerlo lo más fácil posible. That's why in the years they do the same. Por eso es que en los años también hacen lo mismo. Lo dividen de dos en dos. ¿Ok? Is that clear or do you have questions? Entonces, um, todavía tengo una duda. Con respecto a los años, digamos, del 2000 al 2010, sería en el 2000, 2000. Correcto. He was born in, in 2000. And the other is um, 20, 2010 para el 2010. No, 2010. Ah, uh, 2010. Ya del 2011 en adelante, sí, ya comienzan otra vez. De dos en dos. 2011, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2019, 2020, 2021, y así sucesivamente. En 2005 sería 2009. 5. 2005. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. For example. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other question? We will learn uh, this topic, teacher. What topic? Uh, cantidades. Las cantidades, este, creería yo que sí, más adelante en los siguientes módulos van a estar estudiando eso, ¿verdad? Porque sí, okay. o sea, con los números, ¿verdad? Es algo que, como les decía, para no estarnos complicando tanto, se, si son años, se separan así, se leen de dos en dos, a excepción de, como les decía, del 2000 hasta el 2010, que se lee completo, y con cantidades, más que todo si hablamos de dinero, es más común decirlo eso, o leerlas así. A eso me refería yo, a cantidades de dinero, porque usted explicó distintas formas de leer las cantidades de dinero, por eso le preguntaba. Mm, déjeme averiguarles, si no, pues yo les estaría compartiendo información. Y yo les digo esto, ¿verdad? Porque yo trabajé para un banco, ¿verdad? Y era bien común decir las cantidades así. Entonces, si tenían exactamente los 1,500, uno les decía 1,500. O si tenían los 55,000, por ejemplo, 5,500. Esa era la forma más 
fácil de decirle $5,500 dólares para no estar $505,000 dólares, $500 o $55,000 y así, o sea, era más, más sencillo, más simple. ¿Ok? Another question. No? Okay, so I'm going to continue. Arely, can you tell me where were you born? I was born in San Miguel. Okay. Thank you. Um, how about you, Raquel? I was born in Santa Ana. Okay. Um, how about you, Juan? I was born in Chalatenango. Okay. Israel, how about you? I was born in San Salvador. Okay, thank you. Um, let me see, Jacqueline, no está. Ah, yes, she is here. Okay, Sylvia, how about you? I was in San Salvador. I was? I was born in San okay. Salvador. Thank you. Oui. And how about you, Ernesto? I was born in San Salvador. Okay. Thank you. Am I missing someone? Me hace falta alguien? I am. Okay, Kevin. I was born in San Salvador. In San Salvador too. Okay, perfect. Um, is this clear for you or do you have questions? Yes. Okay. Todo claro entonces? Okay, so just to make sure that everything is clear for you and that there are no questions, we're going to move to the following. Okay, wait. Mm. Okay, I don't know what happened. Okay, sorry, but I'm having some problems trying to share the screen with you. Let me see if now I can. Okay, so here it is. Um, I just have some exercises for you that are these. So we're going to do it as a class. And the first part, what you're going to do is to complete the sentences using was or were. So let's begin, let me see, with Mauricio. 
John, John went at home last week. Excellent. Kevin. They were at the cinema yesterday. Perfect. Janet. Your parents were at the station at nine o'clock. Perfect. Sylvia. Ma Mary was in the street this morning. Okay. Um, Ernesto. My uncle was in the hospital just a little morning. Thank you, Arely. Sonia, I was at school this morning. Okay, Isael. You and Kevin were at, at the zoo last Sunday. Thank you. Uh, Raquel, the next one. We were in a Chinese restaurant last night. Okay, excellent. Um, any questions so far? Hasta acá, alguna pregunta o está todo claro? No question. Okay, thank you. So let's continue. So now we have the following sentences. What you're going to do is to tell me these sentences in their negative form. So let's begin. Juan. Mom was at home this morning. Okay, in negative. Uh, Mom wasn't at home this morning. Okay, thank you. Jacqueline. Sorry, teacher, es que tengo mal connection. Okay, so don't worry about it. Thank you. Uh, Sylvia, the next one. Paul and Mary were, were, were not okay. in okay. the shop. Thank you. Weren't or were not Warren. in the shop. Thank you. Um, let me see. Arely. His friend weren't very happy yesterday afternoon. Thank you. Mauricio. I wasn't live for the cinema. And the last one, uh, Raquel. We were at home to watch and feel on TV. Okay, perfect. So now we have the following questions. It says, answer these questions with short answers as in the example, okay? Aquí necesito respuestas verdaderas. So we have the first example. Were you at home last night? Yes, I was or no, I wasn't, okay? So let me see. Kevin, was it hot yesterday? Uh, no, I wasn't. I or it? No, it wasn't. Okay, yes. Estamos preguntando si ayer estuvo haciendo calor. Okay. Si estuvo caliente. Okay. Um, let me check. Janet, were your friends at home last Monday? No, we weren't. Um, okay, oh, listen no. to, the, to the question. Were your friends at home last Monday? No, they weren't. Okay, excellent. <laughs> sí, estamos hablando de sus amigos, es decir, ellos. Okay. Perfect. Okay, Ernesto, was your father at work this morning? No, uh, my father, no. Uh -huh, no. He wasn't. Okay, excellent. And Juan, were you in class yesterday morning? In, yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Okay, thank you. Pero su respuesta verdadera, ¿cuál es? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
Um, hasta acá, ¿está todo claro? ¿Tienen preguntas o dudas? No. No. Ninguna. Ok. Yo tengo, bueno, como, how do you say ninguna en inglés? Um, ok, uh, most of the time. Just wait. Most of the time I make the following questions. And these are the questions that most teachers will do. Uh, is there any question? Hay alguna pregunta? Um, no, there is. Do you have any question? Is ever been clear? Or is it clear? O sea, más que todos son estas preguntas las que hacemos, ¿verdad? Is there any question? Si sí, hay. Decía alguien ahí. Yes, there is. Or no. No, there is. There isn't. Excellent. Do you have any question? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. I or we do. In negative? No. No, I don't. Okay. Is everything clear? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. Excellent. Yes, it is. Or? No, it's not. Generalmente decimos it isn't. Is it clear? Yes, it is. Or? No, no, it is. It, it is. Okay. Bye. Sí, generalmente se les hacen estas preguntas, ¿verdad? Is there any question? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. No, there, oh, isn't. No, there, is. No, there is. Do you have any question? No. Yes, I don't. Yes. Okay. Is it clear? No, it's easy. Ah, okay. Vaya, sí, generalmente cuando se les sabe esas preguntas, de esa misma manera, se va a ir respondiendo. Aquí como estoy usando lo que es el verbo to be, entonces uso lo que es el verbo to be. Acá como estoy usando el do, es decir, el presente simple, entonces acá igualmente tengo que usar lo que es el presente simple. ¿Ok? Ok. Ok. Sí. ¿Preguntas entonces? ¿O está todo claro? Yes, it is. Ok. Yes, it is. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> ok. So, if there are no more questions, uh, we're going to stop here. And tomorrow we will continue, ok? Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. So, thank you and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Oh,